So this is week seven, and week seven we're going to talk about, we're going to finish chapter three, and we're going to talk about all the number systems. So last week we finished binary and decimal, and this week we're going to talk about all the number system, which are with base eight and base 16. So we have octo, so this is called octo, and this is called uh, hexa. So that's what you're going to do today. And we have the, the hexadecimal number system. It's a number system with base 16. And in this number system, uh, we're using uh, digits 0 to 9 and also the letters A to F. Okay? Uh, now, what is important here that the length of hexa number is approximately one fourth of the length of the same number in binary. So we're going to use this when you change binary number to hexa number. Okay? Uh, and also the hexa place num value expressed by of a power of 16. So that's the base uh, for hexadecimal numbers. So now what you're doing today, we're going to transfer hexadecimal to binary, hexadecimal to, um, to, to decimal numbers, uh, and back and forward. So all of this uh, changing the different systems we're going to do today. Okay? So what is important, you have to um, change. Um, we're going to use the base 16, and we're going to change from 16 to base 2 and base 10. Um, why you need the hexadecimal? Because uh, the hard drive is uh, using binary and also uh, some of the computers, they also use hexadecimal and octal number systems. Okay? And uh, let's start with uh, examples. <clears throat> So we have binary number, and you're going to transfer it binary to hexa. So that's where you're going to start. You have binary, and you're going to go to hexadecimal. So this is how you do it. So the binary numbers, <clears throat> uh, you're going to divide it into nibbles, and nibble was four digits, right? You're going to divide it by four, and <clears throat> Substitute each nibble into equivalent hexadigit hexa number. So uh, this is how the uh, hexadecimal number looks like. So you have decimal and you have here hexa. So <clears throat> you have the hexadecimal all the way to nine is the same. So one to nine is the same like decimal. Now the number 10 in decimal is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, 15 is F. Okay, so that's decimal. How change decimal to hex? So we're going to keep that in mind. Now, in binary point of view, so if you compare with the binary numbers, <coughs> if you change binary to hex, so this is what you have. You have each letter <coughs> in hex is represented with four digits, which means you need to remember the four uh, place value for binary, and this is how they are. So you have one, two, three, four, right? <clears throat> so how are these in power of two? So you have one, this is one, which is two to the zero. Then you have two, and then you have four, and you have eight. So if these are the four place value for power of two, for binary number. So if you have binary number with four digits, which is one nibble, uh, <clears throat> you're gonna uh, change it from binary, or the same way you change binary to decimal. So this one nibble is gonna represent one hexa number. And hexa, you're gonna put a little six, 16 down. And this is how, so always again, keep in mind when you have, when you have, um, Everybody understand that uh, if you have 
four digits that's a binary number so this is binary when you transfer it to hexadecimal it's going to be one digit in the hexa okay because if i have for example if i have one 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 for example which of four this is the biggest one the biggest hexadecimal number with one nibble so technically you have to add eight plus four plus two plus one so what is that that's 15 in decimal right now 15 in decimal is represented with the letter f okay so that's how you do it you're going to take each digit each nibble and you're going to transfer it to hexadecimal number digit hexadecimal digit make sense so let's do the example okay so let me do this example for you so we're going to divide this binary number this big binary number and let's see if it's correct so we're going to change each nibble to a letter or to the number in hexa so all of these four digits we're going to change them right and also you're going to keep in mind the the position so you have eight four two and one so these are the, the binary position for a power of two right so what you have the first one the first here is one zero one zero so that means i have to add um eight plus two plus one so when i have those i'm going to get 11. 11 decimal what is the equivalent for 11 you can look here so by nine is 10 is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, 15 is F. So this is how they go. So if I have 11, that's going to be the letter B. So the first digit here is going to be B. Okay? Everybody understand why? Okay? Then you're going to go to the next one. Going to go to the next nibble. And now with the nibble it's one one zero zero so i'm gonna add eight plus four that gives me 12. so what is the uh, the hexa representation of the decimal 12. 12 is actually what c right that's correct many of you say c okay <clears throat> and then you do the next nibble the same way the same idea we're so going to the next nibble I'm going to have, so I have 0, 048, 0, 044, 0, 042 in just one, right? And that's, in, if, the, if you have the numbers from 0 to 9, it's going to be the same in, in hexa. So it's going to be 1. And then you, so far it's good, right? You have BC1. And then you're going to go to the next one, which you have, you have 1, 1, 1 everywhere. So you're going to add 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 which gives me 15 and I know 15 was F and then you're doing the next digit <coughs> the next nibble so I'm gonna add <coughs> 8 plus 1 give me 9 and 9 is going to be nine in hexadecimal nine then you're going to the next one which is <clears throat> zero one zero one so the last nibble is going to be you adding four plus one which is five that's right and that's going to be the number in your hexadecimal so that's how you get this hexadecimal and make sure you put this 16 in the bottom always if it's binary you should have two if it's hexadecimal, it's going to have 16. Okay, Wait. if there is no number, that number is 10 decimal, with base 10. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, yes. Do we use the letters in, if it's over 10? Yes, no, if it's 1 to 9, it's 1 to 9. And then uh -huh. this is how they go. So 10 is A, see 10 is over here. 10 yep. is A, 11 is B. 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, 15 is F. 
and you also have the binary representation. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yes, that's correct, Mark. So if it's double digits, you're going to use letters. Yes. From A to F. Okay. Because we don't have, I mean, I mean, you're using all the letters from one to from zero to nine, and then from ten to fifteen, you're gonna use the letters A to F. Okay. Any other questions? Everybody so far so good. Yeah. Can you copy and paste that chart into like a? Yeah. Document? Like a formula sheet. Yes. Yeah. I can make a formula sheet. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is what you have. This are your. This is how you change. Um, you change binary to hexadecimal. Okay, um, and you're gonna continue. We're gonna continue from there. Uh, so uh, we're gonna make the, the chart. This one is gonna be a formula sheet, and then we're gonna convert now hexadecimal to decimal. So this is how you do that. <clears throat> so if you have hexa to decimal, you're gonna expand the number and you're gonna use the base 10, okay? Now, when you change decimal to hexa, you do similar like binary. You're going to divide by 16. See, this is the way you do it. Divide by 16, divide by 16. So it's the same idea like decimal to binary. But here, instead of dividing by 2, you're going to divide by 16. And you're going to do example, of course, so you can see how that goes. Okay? So let's do example. There is no example, but I'm going to make something here. So let's, do, let's change... <clears throat> Hexa to decimal. So I'm going to give you hexa number. So let's say I'm going to get, uh, let's say the number one B one B zero A, for example. And I want to change this is hexa. I'm going to put the 16 down. I want to change it to decimal. So when you do that, you have to expand it, right? So you're going to have one. Remember the, the when you expand, always you have 16 to the zero, 16 to the first, 16 square, and 16 cube, right? And if you continue this way, the, the exponents go up, right? Remember that? That's expanding numbers is the same for all, all the bases. If you have base 10, base 2, base 16, later on we're going to talk about base 8 is the same idea. So this hexadecimal, you're going to expand it to decimal when you expand it like this. So we're going to have 1 times 16 cube plus, now here we have the letter B. What is the uh, decimal representation of B? 11, right? 11. Yes. And the letter A is going to be 10. So instead of A and B, I'm going to put 10 and 11. Okay? So uh, that's what you're going to do. So we have 16 plus, I mean, 1 times 16 cubed plus 11 times 16 square plus 0 times 16 plus 10, I can just put 60, because I'm going to calculate it, I'm going to put 1, because 10 to the, 16 to the 0 is 1. And then I have to do this, I have to multiply those numbers. So now here, technically, usually this is, if you have 0, it's 0, it's not there. So I have to do what is 16 times 16 times 16. That's 4,000, so I'm just calculating this, so it's 4,000 and 96, and then I need to multiply 16 times 16 times 11, that's 2,816, and I'm gonna, this is zero, so I disappear and I'm just gonna add 10. So when I add those three numbers, I'm gonna get my answer. <clears throat> Six. 
and I got 6,922. So this is my, this is my decimal number. Okay. Any questions? Let me know. So that's how you transfer. Can you do another one like this? Yes, absolutely. So this is my decimal representation. So this is 6,000. This number given here is 6,922 in hexadecimal number. So let's do one more. So you guys give me, give me, um, give me number. So um, give me hexadecimal. So you should have all the letters from zero to nine and then the letters A to F. So which one you wanna do? You can do three, Charlie, three C, three Charlie, three C, yes, six, Delta, D. Okay, it sounds like a flight. <laughs> sounds flight like a number. Oh, yes, yes, flight yes. number. <laughs> I'll pull that off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, okay, so this is. Hexa number, right? So we're gonna. Oops, I was trying to highlight, but okay. So this is uh, changing hexa to decimal number. So we're doing the same. So we're gonna start with this is uh, sixteen to the zero because the base is sixteen to the zero. This is sixteen to the first, sixteen square and sixteen cube. So what you're doing, you're gonna multiply. Now, what is the letter C? It's 12, right? The number 12. D is going to be 13. So instead of letters, you change the letters to numbers first, and then you start multiplying. So you're going to have 3 times 16 cube plus D, uh, C was 12 times 16 square plus 6 times 16 to the first plus 13, 16 to the zero is one, or I can just put times one. And then you can just plug it in, in, I can use symbol up actually here. So we can just plug it in on symbol up and we can, uh, we can get that. So this is what we have when you plug it in into the calculator. And then let's see what is the answer. The answer is 15,469. 15,469. Okay, so that's my decimal representation. Why didn't you have yeah. to do the 13 times one in symbol lab? It does it on uh, I did it. I did it 13, plus 13. I mean, 13 times one is 13. You don't need to put times one. Silly, okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's okay. I mean, make sure you, if you see something else, because it could be somebody else thinking about the same question. Okay, so any other questions? <clears throat> Everybody and say how to go from hexa to decimal. Okay, now we're going to go uh, and do another one, another example where you're going to transfer decimal to hexa. So let's do that. So I'm going to do. I'm going to do examples here. They don't have too many examples, but I'm going to make some. So here we're going to do backwards. We're going to have decimal number given. So let's make up a decimal. So let's do, let's make a number. Let's say decimal number. Give me decimal number. Three, six, seven. Seven. Okay. This is decimal, right? And we're going to go to hexa. So what you need to do is start dividing by 16. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we're gonna divide, and you can use your calculator here also, because this calculator gives you the remainder. Okay, so 367. So you have 367. I'm gonna divide by 16, and that's gonna give me the remainder. So we have it's over here, see 22 remainder 15 okay so let's put that there 22 we have 367 
divided by 16 fifths, 22 remainder 15, right? And then I'm going to do the same, 22, I'm going to divide by 16, and that's going to be 1, remainder, when you subtract 6, right? A 3, remainder 3. So I have 1 with remainder 3, that's what you're looking for. Oops, I need to put look. Okay, one with remainder three, so that's what you're going to put here. One with remainder three, and then you do one more time. One divided by 16 is zero with remainder one, okay? <clears throat> and then you're going to write it from the, the same way you did with binary. You divide by two, divide by two, and you get the remainder. Again, you're going to start from the bottom up. So, and also if you have letter, two digit numbers, you're going to replace it. What is 15? So you have A. <clears throat> F. F, that's right. 15 is F. Good job. So this is going to be replaced with F. So my uh, hexa number is going to be 1, 3, and F. Okay? And that's hexa. Any questions? So all this is basically just last week. We just add like two more two more things to it. That's it. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. Similar. It's similar last week. Yes. So this is how you go from decimal to hexa, and hexa to decimal. Any questions? Let me know. <clears throat> okay. So here we have uh, the next slide is about the relationship. Uh, between decimal and hexa, but when you have the fraction, which means decimal uh, number after the decimal point. So what you what you have here is you're going to multiply by 16. And then you're going to get uh, the whole part. And uh, you're going to multiply by 16, multiply by 16 till you get uh, as many decimal after the decimal point we need. So let's do example so you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do another example when we're going to have decimal with frac like point something. So let's make a something example. Let me give you. So let's say 20. Oops, sorry. This is the how I. So let's do 21 point and just give me number after that. It's a decimal number. Five eight nine. I'm sorry. 21.589. Thank you. 589. So this is decimal and you're going to go to hexadecimal. So now we're going to do 21 one way. We're going to divide by 16, divide by 16 and so on the way you just did it. So we're going to start 21 divided by 16. So it's going to be one with remainder. Uh, which is 21, <clears throat> you technically subtract 21 minus 16 is 5. So the remainder is 5, right? Okay, so uh, that's what I had a question about. 21 yes. divided by 16 in the calculator is 1.3125. How are you getting remainder 5? Okay, let me show you. So if you don't use symbol, if you use symbol up, it's going to give you what is the remainder, right? But if you just use uh, let's do that 21 divided by, let me explain that, divided by 16. <clears throat> it's going to give you decimal. I mean, here it's going to give you, right? But if you have the decimal, oh, it doesn't have the decimal. Okay, so I'm going to do it to my cell phone. So if I have 21 divided by 16, you get 1.3125, right? So what you're doing with that 0.325, 3.125, you're going to multiply this by 16, and that's going to give you the remainder. That's going to be 5. Okay? So if you get the decimal part in your calculator, and you multiply it by 16, it's going to give you what is the remainder. But you have to, like, if you, when you divide 21 by 16, you get 
you can do minus one in the calculator. So ignore the whole part. You get only the decimal part and multiply by 16 is going to give you what is the remainder. Okay. Okay. Yes. You got it? Yes. yes okay. Yeah, so always if you get only the decimal and you get multiplied by 16, it's going to give you the remainder part. Okay, so this is what you get. You get uh, what you get when you go backwards, it's going to be one five point. Now we're going to work with the um, we're going to work with the numbers after the decimal. So now this is the decimal part we're going to get. So we're going to start with point. Five, eight, nine, and you're going to multiply by 16. So when I do that point, five, eight, nine times 16 is going to be nine point four, two, four. And you do the same like binary. You get this and you multiply by 16 again. Four, two, four, multiply by 16. And that's going to be 6.784. And you get this again, and you multiply by 16. Depends how many digits you want. 784 multiply by 16. Oops. It's 12.544, right? Okay, yeah, thank you, Kevin. And then you get this, the, the decimal part only, 544, and multiply by 16 again. And we get 8.704, and you can continue from there, okay? Depends how many decimal. Now, where is the, the, the number in your hex? You're going to get the whole parts and you're going down here, going down this way. So when you do the, the whole part, you're going backwards. So you go from here back. If it's after the decimal, you're going to go going down. So it's going to be fifth, one five point, and then you have nine, six. Now, you know 12 is not going to be 12. It's going to be a letter. What letter is for 12? C, okay. We're going to put C and then 8. Okay, so this is my hexadecimal number. Always if it's hexadecimal, make sure you put that little 16 in the bottom. So that's so said, my, um, yes. So you said after the decimal to get the answer, it's going from top to bottom, right? Yes. I mean, it was the same for binary. If you go for de from decimal to binary, the same way. So if it's a decimal number, the whole part you do it separate, and the decimal, like after the decimal point, you do it separate. When the first part, the whole part, you divide by 16 and you get the remainder for the uh, like the fraction part, which is after the decimal point. You're gonna multiply by 16, multiply by 16, and you're gonna get only the whole part of the multiplication, okay? So that's my number. Any questions? Okay, everybody good? So this is how you do, um, <clears throat> how you change system to system for, oc for octo numbers. Are we gonna go to octo numbers? That was hexadecimal. Any questions on hexa? Okay, going to octo number system. And octo number system, we have the base is eight. So it's the same idea, but instead of 16, you have eight. And here we're using the digits you're gonna use only, are gonna be from zero to seven. Now, here is very important that you put that little eight in the bottom, because if you don't have eight, that means it's a decimal number. So it's a different. So be careful, you have, every time you have a number, you have to put a little eight in the bottom if it's in octo number system. Now, what is important here that <clears throat> um, we have, um, we're gonna convert octo in binary. And when you do octo to binary, 
albino tuoctal, uh, you're going to use one third of the length. So that means if you have a binary and you want to change it to octal, you're going to divide that binary number, not in nibbles, not in groups of four. You're going to divide it in groups of three because every three digits in the, in the binary is going to be represented with one digit in octal number system. Make sense? And I'm going to do example. So you're going to see how exactly that works. So let's do example. So I'm going to convert. Let me do example. So I'm going to convert. <clears throat> binary number. To octal. So let's see. This is I'm going to make up a binary. Now, uh, you want to give me a number, guys? Or. I'm just going to start 1011010101. One, zero, one, zero, one. So this is my binary number, right? And I want to change to octal, base 8. Okay, so if I want to do that, I need to divide it by groups in, eight, in 3. So I'm going to start from the top, from the back. I have 3 here, 3 here, and this is going to be 3, and I'm going to just put 0 here, invisible 0, right? So divide it by groups of 3 digits. And now each digit in binary, three digits is going to transfer to octal. And this is how that goes. Remember the power of two? So if you have three digits, it's going to be like this, three digits, right? So it's going to be uh, one, two, and four. Because if I have, uh, let's say if I have one, 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 the biggest number you're going to get from three binary, is going to be 4 plus 2 plus 1 is exactly 7. Okay, so now let's start converting. So we're going to have, I mean, this is just example how you do that, right? So you're going to start with the first one here. You're going to keep in mind, these are the power of 2. So we have 4, 2, and 1. So here we have 4, 2, and 1. So this Three digits is going to be the binary number two, right? Then the next one you have again four, two, and one. So here I'm going to add four plus two. So that's going to be six. Then the next one again, there are four, two, and one. So here I'm going to add four plus one, which is the number five octal. So my Octal representation of this binary number is going to be 2, 6, 5, and make sure you put that little 8 in the bottom so you know it's an octal number, not, not a decimal, right? It's very important to put this little 8 here. So this is how you change binary to octal. Any questions? Everybody understand that? Okay, now let's do backwards. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a number with octo, and you're going to change it to binary. Again, this is what you need to keep in mind. It's going to be three digits in binary. So give me octo number. So give me a number which have only digits from zero to seven. So give me a number. Seven fifty-two. Seven fifty-two. Thank you. And that's in octo. Okay. So make sure you put that little way down. So what we're doing now, we're gonna represent each each of the digits with with binary, and the binary is gonna have three digits. So how are you gonna do that? Seven is what is seven? Four plus two plus one is seven, right? I'm going to write it here. 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1. So 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. So that means I'm going to have 1, 1, and 1. So that's my binary representation for 7. Then you're going to go and do the next one, which is uh, 5. 5 is going to be 4 plus 1 is 5, right? So that means you're going to have... Uh, 144 four and 141, and you're going to have zero of twos. So it's going to be the binary here is going to be 
101. Okay? And then you're going to go ahead and do the last one. The number 2 is only 2. So it's going to have one of the 2 and zeros here, right? So this number is going to be 0, 1, 0. So we have these three. We have these three. And you're just going to put them next to each other. And you're going to get your answer. It's going to be, so it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Finally. Okay, any questions? Everybody good? Okay, so that's how you do binary to octo. And then we're going to do more examples later on, but let's just finish the PowerPoints and then you can do more. Okay, here how you convert binary from and on octo. So here we have the explanation. Here you go, you have example also. They did it for you, okay? Also, I want to mention also something else, binary and decimal. It's not here, but I'm just going to insert in order to give you example. So how you go from octo to decimal? So let's say I have octo number. So let's say my uh, my octo number is let's say one five seven zero. That's octo, and I want to go to decimal now. So if I want to go to decimal, remember the the expanded form. So I have to represent it with the power of eight. So the last digit is going to be a to the zero. This digit is going to be a to the first, a squared, and a cube. So when I expand the form, so when I write one times eight cube plus five times eight square plus seven times a to the first and plus zero times one is going to give me the decimal form. So obviously this is zero and you can I can just put it in my calculator. So I know uh, 8 cubed is 512. I'm going to add 512. And then 64 times 5 is 320. 7 times 8 is 56. And when I add these three numbers, uh, 512 and 56, I get 888. Okay. Do you not have to put the exponent for seven um, times eight to the first? You didn't put the you didn't put the um, x either. Eight to the first. I, yeah, and you didn't need to put that exponent. I mean, eight to the first is just eight. You don't need to put that. We always. You didn't need to I mean, put the x now, either. Okay. Okay, thank you for asking that. So now, if the question is expand the form, yes, you have to put it. But here they are not asking to expand it. They want you to calculate it and get, so this is your answer. 888 is your answer. Okay, not the expanded form. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. So if, if the question is expand the form, then you have to put A to the first, A to the zero, yes. But here we're not expanding, we're just changing octo to decimal okay you got it okay so now uh let's do another one where we're going to change backwards we're going to have given uh, so the next example i'm going to do is going to be given a uh, decimal and we're going to change it to octo and in order to do that you're going to divide by it divide by it divide by it and get the remainder so the same idea so um, let's say I want to have a decimal number 689. It's a decimal. And I want to go to octo. So what I'm doing, I'm going to start with dividing 689 divided by 8. And I'm going to get the remainder. I'm going to use this calculator. I have 689 divided by 8. It's uh, 86 remainder one. Okay. 
Is that right? 86. Okay. And then you're going to continue 86. Eighty six divided by eight again is going to be ten with remainder three. Oh, no, hold on. Oh, you're dividing by ten with remainder three, okay. And then you're dividing 10 divided by 8. It's going to be 1 with remainder 2. And then 1 divided by 8 is going to be 0 with remainder 1. Okay? And then the number, you're going to start from the bottom to the top. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 1 octal. Okay? If we don't use symbol lab, you said to take... The, everything after the decimal and multiply it by eight or divide it by eight? What did you say? Multiply by eight. Multiply. So when you multiply the decimal part by eight, it's going to give you the remainder. It's going to give you a whole number. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so that's what you have. That's how you change octal to decimal and decimal to octal. And pretty much that's what you have for this week. We have decimal, binary, hexa and octal number systems and you go from one form to another one so just exchange the numbers okay so that's what you're going to have for this week so when you divide so here that was six not three and this three comes from come from the calculator but technically it's six because um when you divide 86 divided by eight here you reduce that fraction. So let me point here. So 86 over 8 is technically 43 over 4. So if the fraction is reduced, then technically you're dividing 43 divided by 4, and you're going to get 10 with remainder 3. Okay? But uh, that's not what you have. You don't have 43 divided by 4. You have 86 divided by 8. So that's why the reduced number is two, and that's why you have smaller uh, remainder. So uh, every time if you use symbol up, be careful. If you have reduced, if the fraction is reducible, then the answer is not correct. So be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, thank you, Jasmine. Oh, no problem. Okay, any other questions? So everybody good with this so far? So we're going to do more examples when you start doing the practice quiz. So I'm going to do the practice quiz in a little bit. And we're going to record that also. And we should be able to start working in the actual quiz. Okay? So that's the material for week seven. 